Hello everybody, in today's video, I'm going to take you on a walk through the PlanetScale dashboard. Now, if you don't know, PlanetScale is a MySQL compatible database. We are a team full of XDBAs and infrastructure folks who got tired of terrible experiences managing databases. So they came to PlanetScale and essentially built the database that they wish they always had. So PlanetScale is built on top of a technology called Vitas, which was created at YouTube back in 2010 to scale their huge MySQL workloads. Vitas went on to become an open source project that achieved graduated status with the CNCF back in 2019. And it is now used by several huge companies like Slack, GitHub, Etsy, and much more to scale their MySQL workloads. The creators of Vitas went on to found PlanetScale. So every single PlanetScale database is backed by this technology, but we didn't stop there. We built some really cool developer-friendly features on top of that, and that is what I wanna show you now. Here we are in the PlanetScale dashboard. Now, right off the bat, it's just packed with important, crucial information for your database. This diagram here is the architecture diagram for your database cluster. So for this example, you see we have a single primary and two replicas. If your database is sharded, you'll see something like this that shows the number of shards, as you can see here, it has eight shards, and then you can click through each shard and see the primary and replicas for each of those. You'll also see these lines down here. These show the replication lag going to each of those replicas. Next, over here, if you click this icon, this is how you can control your cluster size. In this case, we're running on a PS20. You can easily change this however often you like. The price you see here is just for the time that it is running. So if maybe I was expecting a bunch of traffic to come in for an event or something, you can go in here and quickly upsize. And then after your event is over, just go ahead and downsize it again. All of this upsizing and downsizing happens with no downtime and no effect to your users, which is most important. And then down here, you'll see some information about your queries, uh, recent activity with deploy requests and everything. We're gonna go through all of this in a second, but this dashboard is meant to be just a great, quick, at a glance overview of what's going on with your database. You can also choose to switch branches. So if you have multiple branches on your database, you can view the, any of those from here as well. All right, let's look at the branches tab next. So. We have this production branch here, which you can click into that and you'll see the schema of your production database. Now, anytime you wanna make a schema change, PlanetScale supports no downtime schema changes using our safe migration feature. So if I want to make a change to this production schema, let's say maybe I want to add a column to this comments table, all you have to do is click create a new branch. So let's say we want to add a likes column to the comments. We'll call it add likes. We're going to branch off of the production branch like we have here. I'll keep it in the same region. And you see here, seed data. So you also have the option to seed this branch with data. We pull it from the last backup. By default, we only branch off your schema. So this branch won't have any data on it. It'll just have the schema. If you want to test with data, you can go ahead and turn on what we call data branching and that'll pull it from the last backup. All right, so we have our new add likes branch here. We can go to the console, connect to this branch, and we'll do this, show tables. As you can see, we have the same schema as our production database. So this is currently what that comments table looks like. We're gonna go ahead and add the likes, alter table. All right, now, Let's go back to that branch. And as you can see, here's our new likes column. So essentially what this page is showing you here on this development branch is the schema diff. So this is what you intend to merge into your production database. This is a really great view because it can help you avoid really bad accidents. So maybe I accidentally dropped something in the process you'd see a big highlighted red warning here, and you'd get more warnings once you create the deploy request, which is what I'm about to show you now. So 
How do we do that? How do we create the deploy request? We want to merge this into the production database to add this likes column. Down here, you can start that deploy request. So I'm going to say add likes column, create the deploy request. Now, here we are in the deploy request page. If we go back out here, you can see the full deploy request queue. So if I have a whole team working with me, maybe some of them are creating deploy requests at the same time, you'll see all those here. Down here, you can see all the past deploy requests that have happened, just a full view of the changes to your database schema. Now, let's look at this deploy request that I created. Here, you see, another really great view of exactly what you're about to change on your database. So we see we're altering one table. Down here, you can see the exact SQL that will run when you merge this deploy request. Over here, again, you can see the schema change diff, what we're about to merge in. And then, of course, down here, you can send this to your team to review it, leave comments, and finally approve it to be merged. Another cool thing, down here, you see this auto apply changes box. All of our schema changes are done online, assuming that you have safe migrations turned on. Anytime you deploy a schema change, there will be no downtime, no effect to your users. I actually have a whole video on how this works. It's really long, but maybe hopefully worth it. You can click here if you wanna watch that. But essentially, anytime you go through this deploy request process, your schema change is being deployed to your production database with no downtime. Now, that's great, but if you are a huge company and you have huge databases, huge tables, sometimes it can take a really long time to make schema changes to a table. So if I click deploy changes right now with this box checked, and let's just pretend this is a massive table, the whole online schema change process is gonna start running. Once it's finished, whether that's you know in five seconds, like probably most scenarios, or several weeks, it's gonna cut over as soon as it's done. That schema change is gonna go out. Now, the problem with that in these cases where it takes a very long time is it might cut over at 3 a.m. while you're in bed, which would not be great. Ideally, you would be at your desk to check it out to make sure everything went well. And now all of our ex-DBAs from their previous lives, they faced that issue at their previous jobs and they wanted to fix that in Planet Scale. So this little tiny checkbox is meant to address that huge problem. If you uncheck it, this entire process of the online schema change will run, but it'll just hold the cutover until you're ready, back at your desk, ready to do it. And then, then you come back, click the button, and it's just essentially instant. So another really cool small feature just kind of hidden down here in the dashboard. Okay, I was originally not going to deploy this because this is like an actual company tool we use and I don't want people to get mad at me, but I wanna show you this really cool feature we have. And this feature actually might, hopefully if it works, save me from people getting mad at me. So I'm gonna deploy this. All right, I clicked the button. And now how I showed you, I had unchecked that box. This means the online schema migration is complete and it's waiting for me to manually click this button to cut it over. I'm gonna do that now. Please work. Boom, okay, perfect. This is exactly what I wanted to show you. So I added that column to the schema. Um, we can actually go back here to the production branch just to prove it to you. So there is our likes column. Now, I wanna undo that. That was a bad move. People are maybe probably already yelling at me on Slack. No, I'm just kidding. Nobody actually cares. But let's go back here. I'll click this. Look at this right here. All you have to do is click this button, click it again, and it undid it. Let's go back to make sure. So we'll go back to that production branch. Check out the comments table, and boom, it's gone. So... In a scenario where you deploy something and you realize you didn't want to deploy it, it was an accident, maybe it brought your site down, something like that. In most cases, 
we have this tooling built in where you can just click a button to undo it. And the coolest thing, which I wish I showed it to you in this video, but I again have another video where I demo that. The coolest thing is if somebody had written in any data during that time, any data changed, we keep all that data around. So it's not like you just reverted back to a previous backup or something. You are just reverting the schema change and any of that old data that came in in between the time that the likes column did not exist and the time that it did will still be there after you press revert. So that is branches and deploy requests. All right. Next, let's look at this insights tab. So this tab is pretty cool because it shows you a ton of metrics about your database. So you have the query latency tab, anomalies, which we'll talk about in a second, all your queries, rows read, rows written, and errors. You can also choose whether you're looking at primaries or replicas, and you can also choose which branch you wanna look at. One of the really cool things about this is it's not meant to just be stared at. We tried to create it in a way that it's actually actionable. So if you scroll down here, you can look at your slowest queries in the last 24 hours. And if you see something that is in red here, it's usually a good signal that you might be able to improve that query. So with Insights, it allows you to identify these queries that can be improved based on whatever you're looking at. You can click through and it'll show you the query latency and it'll show you more information about that particular query. And another cool thing about this graph is if you have a huge spike in query latency or something, oftentimes you can tie that back to a deploy request. So if we see here, we had a big spike of P95 latency. Let's see who did that. Oh, it was me. Cool. Regardless, this is a really easy way to debug your database. Then we have this anomalies tab here. Luckily, we don't have any anomalies right now, but what this does, what an anomaly is, is essentially we are constantly looking at your active queries and we kind of have a measure of how long they should typically take. There's a, a certain range there. It's all very statistical and mathy, but we have a range of how long they should take. If a query goes outside of that range, for a certain amount of time, then we know something odd has happened and we call that an anomaly. So as you can see here, we have this line that shows the expected range of latency. If I had a query that was way over expected, then you would see on this graph here an anomaly. The rest of these tabs show other interesting data like your queries per second, rows read, rows written, and any errors that are occurring in your database. So really good stuff here to give you more control and insight into what's going on in your database. Over here, you might've noticed this big green alert here, recommendations. So every day we analyze your schema and we give you automatic suggestions based on different things we analyze for. So it might be something like we realize things will run faster if you add an index or sometimes you have redundant indexes. So you can click through and we have a bunch of information about the recommendation. Of course, obviously you're going to want to read through this and if you think the recommendation is good, you can actually go ahead and create a new branch. We will automatically insert what the recommendation is in that branch, and then you can go ahead and deploy that if you wish. Essentially, we try to make it as easy as possible to improve your database with everything in this insights tab. Down here, we have our backups tab. So on every Scalar Pro plan, you get automated backups every 12 hours. We back up your production branches and your development branches. You can also create a new one-time backup here for any of your branches and keep it for however long you want. Or you can create a new schedule that runs much more often than the default 12 hours if you'd like. You really have as much control as you'd like over your backups. You can also come down here and see all of your backups that have been taken and you have the option to restore a backup to a new branch. So if you click this, this will kick off the process of 
potentially restoring to your production database. We first restore it to a dev branch and then you can go ahead and swap that dev branch to production. We give you full instructions on how to do this right on the page as soon as you click this. Unfortunately, I don't have the permissions to click this, so I'm just not going to. Another cool, somewhat unique thing about our backups is every backup is pre-validated and loaded and tested at the time of the backup being taken. All of these backups you see here, you can feel confident that they will not fail, they will work when you need them. Hopefully you never need them. All right, and finally, down here in your settings page, this gives you full control of your database. Now, I'm not an administrator of this database, thankfully. What you see here will depend on your role and permissions for the particular org or database, but you can see all of the settings here, giving you very, very fine control. You can manage your users that have access to the database, any SSO related stuff. You can opt in or opt out of beta features. You can see a list of all the passwords that have been generated, whether they're active, and control IP restrictions. You can rename them, delete them. Everything very easy to manage from this dashboard. Now this was just meant to be a very quick, brief overview of everything you get in the Planet Scale dashboard. I know a lot of times I'm potentially interested in a product, but I don't feel like signing up to see what it looks like. So this was just meant to give you a little tour of our dashboard in case you're interested. If you want a deep dive into any of these features that I showed you, just leave a comment below and I can spin something up if you're interested. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.